All right, good morning, everybody. Welcome to Math Lesson 24. Today, we're all going to be talking about parentheses and the associative properties. So not sure if you've ever heard those terms before or not. So let's take a look. A quick little basic review with one new spin on the terminology. The four operations of arithmetic, and I went ahead and turned these words red, so they must be important, right? The four operations of arithmetic are addition, subtraction, multiplication, and division. I think you knew that. I'm just not sure if you ever knew what their names were. And the basic concept of the day is when there's more than one operation in a math problem, parentheses can be used to show us the order for doing the operations. And this is basically the whole concept of the day. Do the work in parentheses first. If you ran into a problem like this, you wouldn't start with 2 plus 3. You'd go ahead and do 3 times 2 first. And I want to talk about that a little further here. So why it's important to do the work in parentheses first. So I highly recommend doing these the same way when we combine terms in algebra, right? Just underline it and drop down the answer when you're ready. But you read the equation left to right, don't you? So I didn't underline 2. I didn't underline the plus sign, but I did underline 3 times 2, so I better drop down that answer. 2 plus 6 equals 8, because I don't have a variable, so I can just put it all on one line here, right? So what would happen if I didn't do the work in parentheses first, and I just went 2 plus 3 is 5, and I took that 5 and I times it by 2, that would be something totally different. So be very aware just the placement of the parentheses, even though the numbers might even look similar, always work it out. So one other little thing we need to talk about, whichever way we group add-ins, which are the numbers you add, the sum, the answer when you add stays the same, right? I could have 3 plus 2 in parentheses plus 1. That's going to give me the same answer as 3 plus 2 plus 1 in parentheses. If you don't believe me, let's do it. 3 plus 2 is 5, plus 1 more. Hey, that makes 6, right? Over here, 2 plus 1 is 3, plus 3 more. That's also 6. This is called the associative property of addition. And not sure if you ever heard the word associate. Associate means who you're hanging out with, right? Who you're rubbing shoulders with, who you sit next to when you eat lunch. The people that you associate with. The associative property, if they're all adding, means you can change who the numbers associate with, but you're not going to change the answer. There's also an associative property of multiplication. But be aware, the associative property does not apply to subtraction or division. And even if you mix it up, if you have one adding and one multiplication sign, it's not always going to be equal. Okay, so that's pretty much it for everything we need to learn for the day. Let's see how it applies. And we might go and see some problems like this. Solve each problem by following the order of operations. All we know right now is do the work in parentheses first, right? So... We're going to start with 12 divided by 4. 12 divided by 4 is 3. And then I'm going to subtract 1 from it. Hey, that's going to give me 2. 
Pretty easy concept. Three minus one in a fifth grade math lesson, huh? Let's go ahead and try this one. Correct order of operations. Do the work in parentheses first. So I'm going to go and drop that down when it's time, but I read left to right, correct? So I have eight. I have a time sign. And now let's drop down the parentheses answer. 12 divided by 4. Hey, that's 3. So 8 times 3, that's going to give me 24. I highly recommend taking the extra 5 seconds and just putting it all down in one extra line like this. Check out this one. I have two sets of parentheses. Okay. Let's underline and get ready to drop the answer. And let's underline this guy and get ready to drop the answer. So I read left to right, correct? Yes, we do, Mr. Hines. So 14 plus 3, hey, that's 17. I didn't underline this minus sign. But I did underline 32 divided by 8. 32 divided by 8, hopefully you know, that's going to give us 4, right? 17 minus 4, we're back in third grade for this part of the problem. And that's going to be 13. So not too tough yet. Let's take a look at something just a little bit more. Here it says, for each comparison... Write the proper comparison symbol and tell if the associative property applies. So, hey, I got the same numbers here, Mr. Hines. This has to be equal, right? Work it out. 8 divided by 4. 8 divided by 4. That's 2. 2 divided by 2. Hopefully you know that's going to give me 1. But I have the same numbers. It's got to be equal. Well, let's find out. Do the work in parentheses first. 8 divided by 4 divided by 2 is 2. 8 divided by 2, hey, that's 4. It's the same numbers, but this guy is greater than this guy. Do you know why? Because the associative property does not apply. So you would have to go and actually write that in. Associative property does not apply. Okay, that's some pretty funky print I have going on there, isn't it? Let's try this one more time. Make sure we got the hang of it. Got to go and do the work in parentheses first, right? 8 times 4. Let's get it underlined. And I read left to right, so I'm ready to drop down that answer right away. 8 times 4 is 32. 32 times 2. Hey, that's... 64. Let's go and try the other side now. Let's do the work in parentheses first. So let's get it underlined and get ready to drop it down when it's time. And I have 8 times 4 times 2 is 8. 8 times 8 is 64. So I have 64 to the left of me, 64 to the right of me. That sounds like that is very much equal, right? So in this case, the associative property does apply. Not too tough, right? One last one I want to talk about because quite a few people were tripping on it and it was left over from our math investigation, so I couldn't even tell you to fire up your iPads on it. But now that I have it here, 
I'll tell you to dig your iPad out and go watch this section of the lesson. So if you're not sure what's going on, you better make sure you have it now. Okay? So remember this. Out of a 40-ounce box of cereal, one-fourth of the box was cornflakes, and one-tenth of the box was almond slivers. And they might ask you, how many ounces were cornflakes? Well... We had a total box of 40 ounces. One-fourth of the box. How much was the box? The box was 40. And I'm talking about one-fourth of the box. Some people heard me say it. Da-da, da-da, da-da-da-da. Da, 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 da. Divide by the denominator if the numerator is one, right? So I want to figure out what one fourth of 40 is. My numerator is one. So I just got to go ahead and divide by the denominator. 40 divided by four. Hey, that's going to give me 10 ounces, right? How about this one? How many ounces were almond slivers? Well, it's telling you one-tenth of the box. How big was the box again? The box is 40 total ounces. One-tenth of the box. If the numerator's one, all you have to do is da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da. Divide by the denominator, right? If that numerator is 1. So what's going to be 40 divided by 10? Hopefully you know. That's going to give you 4 ounces. If you didn't understand what's going on here, it's to your detriment because I will no longer have to explain it to you it's committed to YouTube for life, right? So if you don't understand these problems, and we're going to have a bunch of them, I'm now going to refer you back to this lesson. So please make sure you understand what's going on, or hit rewind right now. Okay, so I think that's pretty much it. You're definitely going to want a scratch piece of paper and a pencil for the Socrative quiz. And good luck.